Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. My name is Salvador Brigman. Welcome on this show. We talk about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, equity crowdfunding, Reg CF, and really at the end of the day, we're trying to help you get funding, traction, traffic for your ideas, your products, the things you're trying to put out there into the world. And today we actually spoke with a creator, an entrepreneur, a team that has raised over $300,000 on WeFunder. And this is for the future of learning software that builds performance-based habits at scale. So in today's podcast, you're going to hear about kind of what they did in order to be successful, some of the advice that they have for beginning business owners, entrepreneurs, creative types, inventors out there in the audience. And really, if you're trying to do a six-figure raise on WeFunder, I think this is the episode to listen to because it's going to give a lot of different, just simple, high level, and also into the specifics, nitty gritty tips when it comes to doing one of these campaigns. So not only have these guys, you know, done a successful raise, they've also had a ton of success in terms of getting Fortune 1000 and Fortune 50 contracts. They've had a bunch of customer adoption, really interesting story. So you're gonna hear a little bit about that on today's show. The quick thing that I wanted to mention as well is that to me, if you're not tuned into the YouTube channel, you got to go and check out my YouTube channel. Just go and search my name, Salvador Brigman. But I've been putting out so much content, so much stuff on equity crowdfunding in Reg CF. And the reason why, the reason why I'm so excited, man, is that I think that this is the golden age of fundraising, you know, and I'm going out here on a limb and I'm saying, I think this is going to be the year of Reg CF. So Kickstarter Indiegogo is so powerful and I love these platforms, right? They're, they're so incredible for getting creative work out there. But at the same time, I'm really trying to introduce you to all the different platforms and websites that you can use in order to get funding from the crowd. So if you've never heard of those things like equity crowdfunding, Reg CF, a really great place to get started would be my audiobook, Equity Crowdfunding Explained. And they're running this really cool deal on Audible where if you get the audiobook and also a free 30-day trial of Audible, you're actually able to get the audiobook for free, which is pretty freaking cool. So if you've ever been interested in, you know, listening to Audible books, I love Audible, you know, I love podcasts, all that kind of stuff. I love learning through audio. This is a good opportunity. So you can download a free 30-day trial of Audible and also get Equity Crowdfunding Explained. So if you're interested in checking out that deal, I'm not sure how long they're going to be doing that for. You can go and check out this link that I'm about to mention. And you can grab a copy of Equity Crowdfunding Explained. That link is crowdcrux.com slash equity audio. Again, that link is crowdcrux.com slash equity audio, C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash equity audio. Go there and you can get a free 30-day trial and also grab a copy of Equity Crowdfunding Explained. Okay, so that said, I really want you to pay attention on this episode to a couple of different things. Number one is what did these guys actually do in terms of boots on the ground in order to raise six figures using this new method, you know, using equity crowdfunding? Number two, I want you to pay attention to what they learned throughout this journey, throughout this process of doing this, of being an entrepreneur. Because let's be honest, there are so many different types of people out there in the audience. And you'll hear from today's episode how you don't necessarily have to have a business degree in order to be successful when it comes to an entrepreneurial venture. And I really think this applies across the board. So the third thing is that if you are doing something different, you're doing a Kickstarter, an Indiegogo, or you're doing another kind of e-commerce site or another kind of e-commerce product of some sort, still pay attention because I do think that a lot of the learning lessons when it comes to being a leader and knowing how to capitalize on opportunities can really be applied to you and your life. So looking forward to it. It's coming up right after this. Stay tuned. If you're worried about the fulfillment and shipping part of your Kickstarter campaign when it comes to getting out all those perks and rewards to your backers, rest assured I've put together a complete Kickstarter fulfillment and shipping checklist for you, and it's free. This is sponsored by the folks at FulfillRight, and they thought that you should have this checklist as part of your arsenal going into a crowdfunding campaign. If you want to get instant access to this checklist and it's free, you can go to fulfillright.com slash checklist. Again, that is F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com slash checklist. Fulfillright.com slash checklist. Just go to that link and you can download it immediately. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Nate, we have another mega WeFunder campaign in the house, have already attracted over 200,000 with WeFunder. This is for the future of learning software that changes human behavior. And we have the team here on the show to tell us a little bit about that. We have BW and Robert. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. That was a great intro. I'm excited. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, man. Definitely. So I guess we can kind of get started and I guess we can assign this to Robert. Maybe you could just kind of fill in that intro and kind of let the listeners know they don't see the campaign right in front of them. Can you tell them a little bit about 
what you've been working on here and what this product and what this tool is really about. All right. So Robert Feeney, I'm one of the co-founders. B.W. Barkley is the other co-founder. The two of us have been business partners for a long time. And I would say that what we've really gotten out of doing a Reg CF campaign here is the difference between traditional fundraising and this, which is that, you know, traditional fundraising, I think so much of it has to do with, you know, established standards and fundamentals. And a lot of times, you know, your average investor gets a little cut out of that loop. This one, it makes not only makes it available for everybody, but it's all about the story. Mm. And when I say the story, I don't mean like something you make up. I mean, the story of the founders, the technology, if that's what it is, whatever the product is you're selling or offering, and why it matters. People really care about that. And so we've helped tune up our awareness of really what is our story and what drives us to do this. And for those that are out there that maybe aren't familiar, what is that technology or what is that that you're sharing uh, that you're really bringing to the world here? What's kind of different with your company? Well, you know, it's so great. You And this is BW and it's, we want to put that video right smack at the top of our campaign, which shows the disruption that we're doing because learning just doesn't work, especially in the corporate environment. This is where we target how people, they're, they're, they're cram and jam in HR and then they're, they're thrown over to performance and it doesn't stick because the habits aren't being formed around what needs to be achieved in the company. And so our, our technology totally reverses the whole learning process and we make it about performance first. And, and we do that using micro learning gamification in a way that builds habits and it helps employees to perform and meet the company's goals and ultimately keep their job, get raises, have fun at work, you know, high morale, and can go to bed at night feeling awesome. That's what we really are all about. Yeah, and that's obviously huge with the whole work at home environment too, right? Having to keep tabs on employees and helping them move along their track. So I can imagine that that's really big for sure. Yeah, so. it's really big. And and I got to give Robert credit, you know, my co-founding buddy, because he, you know, he really has a big passion and heart for this in terms of the ultimate behavior change that this leads to, uh, behavior change around attitude, which is so important. And that's that comes back to a story of his, a personal tragedy that hopefully he'll share today. But, you know, he, he, it's what took us through the clinical trials. And it made us stick out these years of, of really pain for me in getting through this data <laughs> that shows this is viable and that it really does move the needle and works. And, you know, and then we found the market and, and, you know, the customers and revenue. But it really comes from that place of a need and, you know, going through the clinical trials for years and years. So maybe, Robert, you know, at some point you can share that with the audience today. Yeah, I mean, I'd also, I'd love to just hear how you guys, you know, stumbled on this problem because you're both clearly super passionate about this. Either one of you can take this question. How did you really come into contact with this problem? And when did you really begin to think through a solution here? Well, I like the word you used. You said stumble upon because it's so oftentimes that's what it is and definitely was for us too. We didn't come out the gates as business people saying, I know exactly what I'm going to do in the world. Some do. Instead, we came out of Hollywood, BW and I did. We came out of the entertainment industry. And what we learned in Hollywood is that it's all run by the advertising model, really. There are other models in place, but advertising historically has always been what makes entertainment work. You know about the movies you want to go watch. You know about the TV shows you want to watch because of advertising. You know about consumer products you want to buy because of advertising, and it's all intermixed with entertainment. So what advertising does is it gives you these short, bite-sized pieces of info that help drive you through some value proposition it gives you, some value of why this would be useful to you. And it does it over and over and over again in the in-between moments of your day until eventually, you know, a bag of Doritos falls into your shopping cart and you're not even mm -hmm. sure why. And it's branding, repetition and branding that causes you to change your behavior as a consumer. And, and that lit us up because, and this is what BW is referring to, my background story, what, what had all this well, let's put, use your words. What had a stumble on this technology was that I'd started out growing up with my older and my younger brothers, Tommy and Michael, and both of them suffered from severe mental health issues and both of them took their own lives. So I, I go into my adult years without brothers and it, it had me dwelling in this question of what does it take for someone to be able to take on a behavior in their life that makes their life work regardless of their circumstances? How do you do that? And that question going on in my mind led me when I got together with BW in the entertainment industry, thinking about, well, how do we get people to change their consumer habits? Well, that because that seems to be key. If we don't focus in on that, we're never going to get entertainment sold. We got to think like the advertisers. And then that led to us building this interesting technology that was initially invented by BW 
this idea that we could nudge people in a kind of a gamified way. And at the same time, we're educating them on something we want them to learn. It's not just nudging them to get them back to a marketing campaign. It's educating them as well in this campaign so that they will get to a point. There's a tipping point where they say, I actually want to make use of this info. And they start Mm -hmm. to apply it. Well, the long story short of it was that technology, which was the became Ringarang that we now sell through knowledge as a service, our company. Ringarang, which is a play on the term on boomerang, is that kind of nudge process. It sends out a bite-sized piece of info and it comes back quickly with data on what people know or don't know about it. And you empower customers to keep that loop going like a boomerang, where eventually after enough time and repetition, people start applying it and then they turn it into habits that change their behavior, that deliver large scale companies, their business results. Super cool. I mean, yeah, you guys are a bunch of psych junkies, obviously, like me, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, you can hear it, can you? Right. <laughs> quick clarification question. So would you say the software tool is more focused on helping the employees learn and kind of grow in the workplace, or is it more for the customers of the business? Just to put a clarification there. It's so interesting you say that because, you know, we, we have our buyers that are going to be the customers and we target Fortune 1000s. And so we, you know, we have to give them the value proposition on, you know, why they'd want this and how it's so much better than anything out there. But ultimately, see, in our minds, we, this is about their employees being transformed in a way to where they're fully empowered to perform, which, which is what helps the business. I mean, Got these it. buyers know that they can't improve their business without their people. So that's why we have the apps for the employees to engage with an Android, iPhone, and even web app, because that's where the content's pushed to. That's where the fun happens. That's where the learning happens. And yeah. for the customer, they get all the data you know, pulled up into their system. They can build the content all day up there and push it out. So the customer is the buyer, you know, is the business. And so they're seeing that data. That's what they need is to prove that their goals are being hit. But as BW points out, it really is about the learner or the performer, the employee level. And what we found, just using an example, is, you no, know, you get in, if every, all of us have been subject to corporate training, right? You go in, you get trained, you come out of it, you lose all of it. I mean, you, you, you statistically are losing about 80% of it, but you, you feel like you really can't remember any of it. So what does that do? It leaves you set up to fail. You feel like you're being set up to fail. Your managers know you're not going to remember it either. So they're kind of in the conspiracy, so to speak. And then mm-hmm. what happens is you do something wrong and you get dinged for it, but the company's okay because they covered their butt by giving you the training and ticking the box that you took it. So now you get fired, let's say. And you end up going to your next job with the exact same problem over and over again. So to BW's point, it really does come down to empowering people to not be set up to fail, to not feel disempowered, to actually feel they can go home after the end of a good long day at work and feel like they could command their own destiny because the tools were given to them in a way that actually works. Yeah, that, that's super cool. And I know you guys also have some metrics on how that works and you know some of your stats there. But before we get into that, just out of curiosity, you know, how did you guys end up, you know, syncing up or linking up to be able to work on this project? Like what are your individual skill sets here when it comes to this? Well, I'm, for me, I'm a serial entrepreneur just you know, from head to toe. I come from Wichita, Kansas. It's an entrepreneurial center of America with Coke Industries, namely being the biggest private owned company in the world is here. And so I grew up in that with the, an entrepreneurial family. And when I went out to, to L.A. right out of high school, I just I pretty much immediately met Rob, who was putting together this movie production company with some fellas. And that got me excited because, again, entrepreneurial bug. We started off in entertainment. And so I just everything I do is, is from sh- the street smarts. I've learned to you know, operate. I've learned to raise capital and, and structure deals. You know, I've learned to do product development, working with teams. I've, you know, I've been overseas many times, even with different product developers. So can, with me, I learned everything in the doing is what is where I come from. Mm. Yeah. And I came out, I went into the entertainment industry as an entertainer. I started on, you know, in theater on stage and then in front of the camera, I had the no way. That's 15 awesome, man. minutes of fame. Yeah, yeah, I was actually in a Disney movie called Newsies where there, you know, there's they had a big cult following for a long time. And so it was kind of my fun way of knowing what it's like to be in the center of Hollywood, even though it wasn't a big role. And from there, that's when I wanted to kind of command my own destiny and see how we could take this question I was dwelling in from my upbringing to see how, how do we shift people's behaviors, maybe even more, even a better, more effective way than telling inspiring stories in a movie or TV show. What if we could get into, as I explained to you, the ad model 
and do something even more effective with technology. And that's what led us ultimately to building this technology and trying it out. But the, to the, your point, yeah. Salvador, about stumbling on it, that's when you know I, I needed someone like BW, who even though neither one of us had a college degree and, and still don't, we've wound up over the years, once we took this through clinical trials, to becoming a leader in the space of education. <laughs> like we're in, the, we have some of the largest companies in the world working with us that are taking our cues on how to change the performance of their people um, through learning. And it's, a, I think it's a great message for anybody who's an entrepreneur. It's like we, it's not that you don't want to go get a college degree. It's just that a college degree isn't like a necessary requirement in order to become yeah, really yeah. successful at what you do. You know what I love about that too is you guys are both bringing from very very different worlds a whole swath of expertise to this. And also, I mean, you're looking at corporate training in a different way. If you don't come from a corporate background, right, you almost can see that in a right. more novel way. So I really like that. I did have one question for BW. So, you know, you've done a little bit of traditional fundraising and raising money for startups. You mentioned being a serial entrepreneur. How did that kind of compare to the WeFunder process? And when did even you think of doing a campaign like that, the WeFunder campaign? You know, man, it's such a great question because for me, it was a night and day just wonderful relief and doing pirouettes through the office for days. So as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I knew that the Securities and Exchange Commission was was doing this Jobs Act 506C, you know, where you could go out and publicly raise capital from accredited investors and, you know, throughout the known universe and unknown with radio ads and whatever, I, I jumped all over that back yeah. in the day. But then whenever the crowdfunding came about and the idea of micro-investments, and the new changes they did at the beginning of last year, you know, I think it was February, where they, they increased the raise from a million to five. And they did different things like testing the waters. Man, at that point, I said, my gosh, this is the time to do it. And don't get me wrong. It was largely because of the, the pandemic shifted a lot of the bigger ticket check writers over to the crowd. I mean, the numbers just went up and up all across the board. Start Engine started, Mr. Wonderful, a lot of things like that. And I said, I got to be there. This is the time. Heck, a good buddy of mine raised three million bucks through uh, through the crowd in, in two months, and I said, "Man, I can't be behind the curve here. I, I guess yeah, I got to get part of this." Yeah, yeah. So I, I convinced the team that this is the place to be, and I also convinced them further that Wichita, Kansas, the hometown here, is really the place to do this with the local support being on high always for startups. Mm -hmm. Well, and that, that so, actually was a big part of it, BW. I think it was was the the Wichita part of our story. You know, like I, when I was uh, saying at the very beginning of this conversation, it, it really, one of the things that was illuminating for me and BW is how important it is to tell your story in a way mm. that people can relate to it. That seems to be what gets the crowd, you know, through WeFunder and other platforms going is BW is able to tell his story so effectively about why Wichita, you know, why is Wichita, Kansas, the next Silicon Prairie? You know, and that's his roots, right? And he's able to bring, well, sometimes a lot of people on the coast, you know, I'm from California initially, you know, we were in Silicon Valley when we first cooked this up and we weren't thinking Wichita, but BW made a pitch for it. He's like, you know, we got to get you, get this company here. We're going to be special here. There's a community that's hungry for tech startups. We got to get in here. And by, it really worked. We rooted our company in Wichita, Kansas. We moved it. And there's so much of a groundswell of support here with the local universities, city government, business leaders, and the crowd. People wanted to invest in their own city. And then couple that with the story that I just brought. And I started having the courage to tell my story about with my brothers and what I'd lost yeah, there and how yeah. that became the, you know, the foundation of the technology, those stories resonate and people invest because of it. Yeah. I mean, I definitely yeah. think that's a, a big contributor. And also the fact that, you know, Silicon Valley now is so incredibly expensive, right? To be able to hire talents oh, yeah. and even just have an office space is insane. Obviously hire people from around the world. So that's awesome. So, you know, in terms of the process of WeFunder, for those in the audience that might be thinking about doing this, was there anything you did in the way of like marketing your campaign? I mean, you guys have been able to get past 200K so far. When you launched this, did you like market it? Did you tell people about it? Like, what did you do to really get to a big number like that? For us, it's a little bit unique because we have a product history. And so, you know, there's a lot of R&D capital that we had raised over the years. And so there was an existing base of investors that we had in our company. But we did team up right away with Aurora, Aurora Project, for the crowdfunding marketing expertise. And so they helped us with designing the page 
and they helped us with with knowing how to, how to really get out there and market. Yeah. So and then we'd immediately hired a marketing person here to come on and, and kind of head the whole effort up. And there was a lot of local uh, focus around the Wichita environment. So the first step is getting those reservations through the test the water opportunity. So we had to get up to 50,000 in order to really kick this thing off and we fund or else you really don't qualify. But we were able to get the 50 fairly quickly because of our existing base and, and just the, the news in Wichita spreads fast. And so they wanted to support that. You know, our, our situation is a little different, but I can tell you that the known marketing channels that are out there that Aurora Project talks about, then even WeFunder talks about. I got to tell you, WeFunder has phenomenal support with their FAQs and the contacts up there. They'll help you, you know, with these different guides and when to do, what to do, how to do. Really awesome and helpful. They even sent an email out to their investor base, which they have over a million. So they do a targeted email and it brought in money just, you know, right away. So the WeFunder has mechanisms in place to help raise that capital. And the rest just comes down, Salvador, to just consistent social media marketing and consistent events that we were doing in person and consistent emailing. There's a lot of cool little things around it. But all in all, the machine does work when you work it. So, you know, talking about Wichita, obviously, that's one reason why people are investing. And also the fact that obviously online education and company training is huge. When it comes to like the results, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, because I think that might also be what's motivating people to become an investor as well. Yeah, and I, would, I would really love to talk about some of those results. I, I, to be compliant, since we are still active with the raise, I'm not able to get into some of the details, but I can tell you that we've had 33% of the local investors that have come onto our campaign, we've actually hired and retained because we needed their services, right? I mean, this is, mm-hmm. we're, we know, we're finding great talent locally. And so what we found is that people can be a value to our company outside of just investment, which was really a surprise for us was that, hey, there's talent out there that want to work with our kind of a disruptive tech. So we ended up hiring a third of the people who came into Wichita. And it sounds like a big chunk. And actually, you know what? It actually was. We have several people working for us and, and it's really exciting. Yeah. So, and just to also say, you know, you guys already have contracts with Fortune 1000, right? Fortune 50 companies, it looks like. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you're already in operations here, right? Yeah. But the crowdfunding capital has, you know, such a, so meaningful for us because it is accelerator cash and it, it sets up the more of sort of referral people out there spreading the word. And we've had biz, biz dev come through with it. Heck, one of our customers invested in the crowd, and one of our uh, custom, one of our other customers was doing social media publicizing about our investment, about you know li- the link to WeFunder. So there's all these cool surprises that happen. We got wrote, you know written up in the press ten times, free press, because mm. of this, and it blew my mind. I've never even I never thought we could even get three or four, but ten, and so just so many okay. cool things like that. You know, we have a low minimum. For people to come in, we've had people come in from six different countries. So I couldn't believe it. Korea and Kuwait. Just like, wow, where do these people yeah. <laughs> come from? But it's because of the, the the word gets out there with the roar doing its thing and the marketing. All of a sudden, surprises happen. And, you know, we're at a quarter million dollars or, you know, that's what happens. And it's a really great blessing to have WeFunder there and, and the new CF rules. Yeah, so I was looking at what people say. So it looks like some people say micro learning is an excellent approach to learning. Some people are like, I believe in these guys. I actually see this as a powerful tool in the healthcare field. A close friend who recommended it. Other people say they're honored to invest. They saw in the Wichita Business Journal. So you have a whole mm-hmm. group of different types of audiences here, it looks like. You know, it's true. We, we've had a doctors come in. We've had a, we had a high school kid come in, just graduated 18, wanted to be part of the future. You know, he sees this as a way to be part of the future, which is a blessing. We even had a 90-year-old guy come in and invest. (laughs) Blew my mind. So, yeah, it's a nice mixture of people, which here's the thing about crowdfunding. I just got to tell you, it forces us to be speaking and sharing with the public. It forces us to listen. And it just keeps our chops sharp in that area, which I love. I love being out there. And crowdfunding forces a company to do that, no doubt about it. And if you're not doing that, you're not really playing the game strong to win. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the cool thing about that is you really are telling your story over the course of the entire campaign. And it's almost like you now have all these people who are following that story and kind of waiting to see as you hit new milestones, right, with the growth of the company, which is really neat for sure. Oh, yeah. We get to email them and Zoom meetings, and we still get to promote our updates through the WeFunder portal, which is a great tool. You just 
you know, it goes to all of them. And they're on board to see this change happen in the corporate America. It, it is broken. We're here to fix it. And we're glad we had data from 2021 to show that we have market traction. That there's a need there and that people care about it. A lot of these people are employees. You know, they know the pain of being belittled at work with traditional training. It just sucks. Mm. It doesn't do what it's meant to do. And as an example of how we did it in the campaign here is BW was making sure that we would do a, a video announcement every time we'd hit a milestone. And that's really, we found that to be really effective. You know, people will watch a, like a quick video of a couple minutes, let's say, of us talking about when we landed, you know, a federal government contract with the USDA, you know, which is a big deal because they're now taking on this methodology to do their own training of, in their case, the U.S. Forest Service, firefighters on the front line helping save lives because, you know, when you get out of your training, if you forget that, you're not going to be remembering the key things you have to when you're on the front lines and there's a giant fire that's 10 times your height. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we have a new Fortune 1000 company or 100 company that comes on and is starting to use this to, to change the, the entire approach they use for training people around the world and geographies everywhere, you know, you're training people in New Zealand, in India, in Latin America, and they can now do it at scale with our technology. So we give a quick two minute or three minute video about here's that next milestone. And it makes a huge difference. People really get how it's working in the world. And, you know, it's exciting for us to be able to say, to show our progress. Yeah, I, th I think it makes it a lot more real. One of the other quick yeah. questions I had for you was, which I think is pretty transparent, you guys decided to do a price round, right? Instead of doing a, like a crowd safe for future equity. Was there any thought yeah. behind why you made that decision? Yeah, you know, we were we were just looking at the, the public at large and their level of understanding deal structures. And, you know, although safe is extremely popular and a really great model, we just felt with our particular audience we were going after that just buying straight on an equity round would would make more sense. And also given that tangible feel like I have a piece of this future in my hand versus it being a convertible note or, you know, something like a safe. So we, we yeah. want to just give them something more tangible and that they can understand. Yeah. So we definitely can't get into the specifics, but you know, you guys can go and check it out on WeFunder for those that are listening to the show. So I mean, first of all, Really cool what you're doing here. And, you know, the fact that you guys are using crowdfunding, I think is really unique and interesting. I just had like one or two more questions. But before we do, where can people go just to learn more? Because I know we're talking about, we're throwing out a lot of key terms. Where can they go to learn more about your campaign? Okay, sure. Well, you know, if you go to our main website, ringorang.com, you'll see the investor button at the top. You can click ring, R-I-N-G, O, rang, R-A-N-G. Or, you know, you can just go to wefunder.com and, and, and search under the name CAS, which is K as in knowledge, A-A-S, you know, like knowledge as a service. That's the name of the company. And Ringarang is the product. Awesome. And so one question for, for you, BW, you've mentioned being a serial entrepreneur. What do you feel like of all the people that have come up to you that you've talked with, what are some of the common threads or do you tend to give any kind of common advice to beginning entrepreneurs or people that are really struggling to get their products out there? Yeah. The biggest advice I give people, and it, it's pretty common, is to share your story. And, and that story will attract your team. You know, a lot of times entrepreneurs will come to me and it's just a one-man operation, a one-person operation, a one-gal operation. One is not enough. If You've got to share the story and that'll attract those who want to be part of growing that story and having a story be real. And from there, it's kind of like everything starts to happen because you've got the team ideas, collaborations, more resources. So my main thing, I always start at the beginning and, and that's get that team in place. Now, I mean, that's a kind of a basic level entrepreneur that has an idea or a product, you know, even just a product oriented, you know, entrepreneur, you're not enough. You got to have a company, you got to have people. And then from there, it just, you can go to the next levels. And, and for you, Robert, do you feel like, you know, from your theater and entertainment background, is there anything that you specifically took, any lessons you've learned in that industry that you feel like have given you an advantage when it comes to starting and growing this company? Well, storytelling. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've been talking about storytelling is the theme, right? And yeah, for sure. You, you'll notice when you go to the videos that we put on the front of our campaign on WeFunder, we regularly have gotten comments saying, I love the video. Now, is it because it's like super Hollywood produced? No, it's not. It's just that we told a story in a way that's very relatable. 
And that's the big thing we found on this that's maybe a little different than what you'd see in a regulation D offering or even something that's on, you know, like an IPO or something. You're not telling the story the same way. Here, you got to tell a relatable story that anyone, it can touch them, move them, inspire them. I love the way BW was talking about how you got to build the team because that's one of the things our storytelling did too. It wasn't just telling the story so that someone would be interested to invest. It was telling the story in such a way that people wanted to work for us. Mm. And we've just gotten such a groundswell of support of people in Wichita, among other places, to say, hey, I want to be a part of this movement you guys are creating. So storytelling for sure. Awesome. Awesome. So my final question for you, at least on the, the company side, and then we'll have one closing question, is you know your vision for the future here. So you guys are, you know, really uh, have big shoes to fill when it comes to providing all this content for employees and helping these mm-hmm. massive companies with that. What do you see this upcoming year being that focus? Like, what are you guys really focused on for, for this year? This year is really about having a, a distribution, you know, a channel network that is able to get this out to more customers faster and easier. The way we look at it is how fast can we get this out to employees so we can make more of an impact? And immediately we go to distribution. So it's someone like, I'll just drop a couple of names, some, something like an Accenture or Capgemini or SAP, some, something like that that can come in and take this on you know, through our white label capability and just go and offer this out to all the employees. It's going to give us a much bigger reach. That's the big goal for this year mm-hmm. is what we have. Yeah, to have as many of those as possible. One of our Fortune 50 customers, I had a chance to do a conference speaking to the public for the first time here this month in January, where we got to co-present what kind of impact we're having. And to give you a sense of our bigger picture and where we're heading now, what they were explaining was that there's an entirely new model that the entire industry of training gets to take on, and it's called Performance First. This is the model of how do you focus on performance instead of focus on learning. The learning, focusing on learning is all well and good, but you can put a storm, like a fire hose of training at people that people are not going to remember. Mm. When you focus on performance, then you just reverse engineer from there. It's like the 80-20 rule. You only have to focus on maybe 20% of the learning that needs to be done to get 80% of the performance impact. And that's a whole new model. So we're really proud to be going to market with such a partner like that and others that are now coming on to want replica products and models as well. So what I would say is three years from now, this is my prediction, is that you're going to be seeing all of the emphasis and training on performance as being the place to start. Yeah, it almost seems like a switch as well from just being theoretical to something much more practical. Right. Which makes a lot of sense for not going to college, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. There you go. Right. It's like you got to get really pragmatic. How does it really work in the world? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. So my final question for you here, and we'll close out the show, is if you could speak directly to the audience and you can leave the listeners with a final word, it could be a word of encouragement. It could be something that you wish you knew in the early days when you were trying to get started. It could be a final tip related to crowdfunding or just you know some business advice in general. Anything along those lines, we can end on that note. So yeah, I'm gonna jump in and just say, don't be afraid to make those bold requests and definitely make the bold requests. A lot of people are not asking. They're not asking for the money. They're not asking for the help. They're not asking. Ask and ask early and ask boldly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really great. I'll dovetail onto that and say that also don't be afraid to screw up and screw up out loud in front of everybody. There is something unique about a Reg CF offering here, like with WeFunder, where you're constantly communicating with people. It's a marketing campaign as much as it is anything, right? And so that means you got to drip out constant communications and things are, that means you're not always going to look good. You're going to say as much as you can about what you think has been a success, but you always also got to talk about the other things that aren't working. And the more and more and more you do that, the more people trust that they're hearing the straight story from you. So don't be afraid to screw up. Well said, well said. Well, congratulations on all your success so far. I'll be sure to link this up in the show notes so people can go and check it out and look forward to your next couple of weeks and days here on WeFunder. And thank you guys so much for coming on and sharing all that great advice. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah, great to talk with you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. Again, my name is Salvador Brigham. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you leave today's episode hyped up, jazzed up, excited to launch your own entrepreneurial business or venture. And in addition to use a new tool, whether that's Reg CF or WeFunder or one of these other crowdfunding sites in order to get funding for that idea. 
right? And the cool thing about this is obviously you're getting investment capital, you're getting validation, you're getting marketing as well, brand awareness, which I think is incredible. And also the fact that, you know, these people who invest in your company through a public campaign are able to then become evangelists for your brand. So when I first learned about this, this is actually back in 2012 when I was first getting into the industry. And to kind of give you a little bit of industry history, I started in the industry when I was at college, right? And I was really fascinated with equity crowdfunding and kind of what was happening with the Jobs Act. And that was specifically passed, I believe it was in 2012, and then it started to be more enacted in 2015. A lot of slowdown happened actually throughout that process, as you can imagine with government agencies and all that stuff, right? But I initially did my study on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and that's kind of what pioneered my career and why I put out so much content on that. But in addition, you know, equity crowdfunding, Reg CF, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for ordinary everyday entrepreneurs. And I'm talking about creative types, I'm talking about inventors, even if you have a physical product, this is something that you can use. And also if you have a software campaign, something like that you were thinking of launching, this is also a great opportunity for you. And the reason why I started to become even more interested and started about way more content on YouTube when it comes to Reg CF. Why? Because recently the funding limits were raised. So originally you can only do a million, 1.07 million uh, in terms of the amount you could raise in a Reg CF. And recently I believe that was raised around 5 million. There's also some other kind of cutting of red tape, if you want to put it that way, in government terms that happened where it's a lot easier now to participate in these campaigns. It's a lot easier to raise money. So I feel like not only has this past year been tremendous in terms of Reg CF and the amount that's been raised has been huge with WeFunder, Start Engine leading the charge there and a lot of other great companies as well. But in my opinion, this upcoming year is going to be massive. It is going to be huge. And the reason why is that the barrier to entry is just so freaking low, man. And I think I saw this obviously with Kickstarter and you see that in the early days of most of these platforms is that it starts out like really low barrier to entry. And you know, you can throw up a video that isn't super good necessarily, that isn't super highly produced. You can get a campaign page together. And to me, this is like a good time to really consider an option like this. So first of all, go and check out some of those campaigns on WeFunder. Go and check out some other episodes out there that I've done on WeFunder campaigns, et cetera. But if you really want to talk about how this could work for you, for your company, for your startup, if you're kind of pondering this over in your head, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and we can talk about how that would work for your company. Um, you can go in depth as well as talk about some of the marketing techniques behind the scenes that are proven to get investors to get traffic to those campaigns, whether that's accredited or non accredited investors and also how these platforms work, all that kind of stuff. So you can book this coaching call. It's an hour long intensive call. You can go to crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That link is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Go to that link and you can book a one on one coaching call with me. We can also possibly talk about how I could get involved. It depends on how the opportunity there, I think, for your company and kind of what industry you're going into, all that kind of stuff. But I love hearing about also different startups, and I'm trying to bring on more people on this show to just showcase the opportunity that I am seeing privately behind the scenes just blowing up, right, when it comes to Reg CF. So we're going to be doing, obviously, more Kickstarter Indigo episodes soon, as well as more Reg CF episodes. And really, again, the Bedrock Foundation, the knowledge behind this podcast is what's going to enable you to raise money from the crowd. And I am so lucky and I'm so privileged, man, to be able to guide you through that process. So thank you so much for tuning in. Give me a rating and review on iTunes. Give me a thumbs up if you're listening to this on YouTube. Leave a comment down below. Again, my name is Salvador, and I will see you next time time.